Um, thank you very much for inviting me today. Um, I, I think to my uh, talk to finish off this morning's little uh, run of presentations uh, is going to sort of tweak things slightly. Uh, really, this is more about a project that we're undertaking which looks at how we can justify this digital engagement of <coughs> whatever type and actually how valuable it is not only to us uh, working in very specific areas of digital engagement and any type things, but also to the sector as a whole. Um, so, first of all, I'd like to uh, add my colleague's name to this slide vicariously. Uh, my colleague Stuart Jeffrey has been doing this project within the ADS. I'm here on his behalf today. Um, but to give you a bit of background, I'm, I'm sort of hoping that the vast majority of you here will have heard of the ADS and, and the work that we do up at the University of York. Is there anyone who hasn't? Oh, oh one. <laughs> I'll be picking on your letter. <laughs> <laughs> no one will admit that. So, uh, we were set up in 1996, uh, one of five AHDS subjects that based in the University of York. Uh, we initially received funding from the Arts and Humanities Research uh, Board, AHRC now, and the GIS. We presently receive core funding from AHRC, a little bit from NERC, and the rest of the money that we get in is all project-based funding. That's usually associated with deposits of archaeological archives. Um, uh, and by that we mean um, data sets primarily, and we're not a website host. Uh, which, uh, in view of the, the discussions that we had earlier today, is probably quite important. Our usage, who uses this? Well, way back when, in 1997, when we started, there were a few of us, and uh, we have grown and grown and grown. So we have about 12 million usages, whatever that means in web stat terms, per year at the moment. Uh, as you look at this, I was looking at this on the train on the way down today, and I was thinking, have we, did we make a mistake in 2009-2010, or was 2008 just a good year? Uh, I'm going with the, the latter. I think 2000 year was just a blip year. Um, the, the number of, the amount of use that we've had, obviously, it, it's grown exponentially, but it also tracks, if I were to overlay the trend of the increase in the number of collections that we've had, you'd see that it was actually doing almost exactly the same thing. Obviously not to the same extent, because we have about 500 collections. 17,500 reports and um, about a million or so index level records. So who's using us? So this is all pertinent, I think, in terms of, of what we're talking about in terms of digital audiences. Broadly, we're looking at a constituent which is uh, primarily education-led. So, but that's to be used, for, for our data to be used within teaching, learning and research, so it's quite a broad education base from further and high, further and higher education like to postgraduate studies um, to academics be using data for research as well. Uh, we can split that down, obviously, and, and <coughs> these slides I think will be available later when we can, so um, you'll be able to have a good old look at that. Uh, but also it's quite interesting to see that there's a, a high number of people within the commercial sector who use us and national and local governments and independent sector as well. So about half the number of users come from a wider heritage sector. It's always been one of our things that we've always wanted to deliver <coughs> digital data <coughs> sets and archives to the widest possible uh, sector that we can. Um, we, in terms of reuse of data, so people who come to our site not only just have a look and think, oh no, what have I stumbled upon and go somewhere else, uh, but it actually in terms of taking our data and reusing it, then again, the majority is academic research, uh, but not, the, not a vast uh, amount of, of difference between that and the other areas of people using it. So we have a lot of this information uh, about who uses, I mean, broadly, what for, they use our data for, but really, uh, this sort of mix in with our funding regime, we wanted to take a better look at the perceptions of value of the digital collections as held by the ADS. Um, so what we have done uh, is try and find ways in which those perceptions can actually be measured. And this is to try and cut, we, we, we often talk about value within archaeology and there's lots of things like, oh well, you know, 
we dig it up and we've lost it forever and always very valuable because it enhances our social well-being and this, that and the other. But we've always been quite airy-fairy, I think, about actually pinning down how much it actually is worth in economic terms. And one of the reasons why we haven't done that is it's actually quite difficult to do. Um, this is what we're trying to achieve in this project, which is being undertaken as part of a JISC funded project um, with a, an economist from Australia, actually, uh, and uh, with Charles Beebe uh, Associates, Leo Beebe from Charles Beebe Associates. So we've concentrated very much of, on the perceptions of value by our users, and um, we're looking at really basically asking them questions like, how much would you pay if you had to pay for something like this? Uh, how much would you, um, how much would you, if you were, if this service was to be taken away from you, how much would it be sufficient compensation for that service going? They're the sorts of questions that we're asking. So the project's objectives as a whole is to analyse and uh, survey perceptions of the value of digital collections held by the ADS to try and extend that testing and development of economic and survey collection methods to the ADS because other people have tried this, other people in a similar position, and analyse their potential contributions to sustainability, working on the premise that if we can actually pinpoint financial value to this stuff, then we can make better and easier cases for why we should continue to do it. Uh, so we then want to communicate those findings and try and disseminate the lessons that we've learned. This is based on previous work. Uh, some of you may have come across some work done, uh, again, by Charles Beavery Associates on the KRDS benefits framework. That's Keeping Research Data Safe Benefits Framework. And it's a framework which has been used, and well, was developed really, uh, by a number of data centres coming together. So not just archaeology, but people like the UK Data Archive, Economic and Social Research Data people, um, uh, people from Kings as well, coming together and looking at uh, why we are keeping this data safe, what's the point of it, um, and who, who, ben who benefits from that. So the KRDS Benefits Framework looked at this and looked at uh, a three-dimensional way of trying to identify these benefits. We, the ADS, were involved in the creation of this first set of, of information, or all of which is available online for you to download, and hopefully it's still there. Um, uh, and we looked into the particular issues of the costs in the digital preservation of research data. So we, as people who are doing this, could actually sit down and identify how much it costs to take a piece of research data and to sustain it and preserve it in the long term. It was interesting, therefore, to start to try and weight this cost against the benefit and the value that the, the preservation activity actually produces. So, we're hoping that the impact and evaluation can help identify the different values for different audiences. Uh, and coming back to our sort of split of the pie chart that, uh, that we saw before. Uh, and that's why we're bothering. Uh, we want to help uh, in terms of research bid terms to help justify costs. All those of you who've been involved with a recent AHRC application, for example, will know that there's a massive section on impact. And that impact is uh, a little bit, especially for arts and humanities type of uh, areas of discipline, is a little bit woofy and airy fairy. And we all say, well, yes, we're going to go off to a primary school and going to put some posters up, so that's going to be very impactful. Um, well, hopefully, what this is going to, to do is actually start to really sort of uh, pin down uh, the economic value of this. So we can say this is going to be worth X amount of pounds to the wider sector. Uh, we're also hoping that in an archive preparation terms, it helps in that selection and retention process. So we can look at that and say, oh, well, the cost of this thing was X million. Um, the cost of our archive maybe is £3.50. It's fantastic value for money um, because it's going to bring on a, a huge return in economic value. <coughs> so the initial sort of work that we did with the uh, KRDS was really a bit of a light touch in helping persuade projects to look at benefits in their widest possible sense. Um, 
what we're doing is presenting uh, the wider benefits, both tangible and intangible, in this. And the economic analysis is a, a deeper quantitative insight into impact with a range of numbers that we can actually pin down things. Now, um, we do have some numbers. The project is still ongoing, and it's due to bring its uh, findings to publication in about sort of February, March time, I think, is the timetable. So, because we're still playing with the figures, and because we would like to get them spot on <coughs> for um, making them more widely known, I haven't included the figures here. However, these are, these are the areas to, against which we have attributed figures. And we've done this by a series of user surveys. So we identified our user groups, we got in touch with them, and we said, all right, who are you? What are you doing with our data? How much is it costing you in terms of your time to use this data? How much is it costing you in terms of the opportunity cost, i.e. how long would it take you to get the same level of data, if indeed you could, if you weren't using us? Um, and how are you reusing it? And then, how much would you therefore pay for this service? Now, uh, when we ask this range of questions, you, you, might, as, you might expect, as we did expect, although we put in massive length on the top of the survey, we have no intention of starting to charge you for the use of the ADS. We did get several returns from people saying, well, we're not answering those questions because we don't think we should have to pay for this. Um, uh, that wasn't really the point. I'd like to reiterate here that we've no intentions of charging for the services of the ADS. This is purely about trying to pin down uh, what value uh, we can attribute to the work that we do. As I said, we're not the only data service that's going through this at the moment. Other disciplines are doing exactly the same. So the same methods have been applied to the Economic and Social Data Service, and the report has been published on that. It's there, it's online for you to go and have a look at. Um, we're also in the August company of the British Atmospheric Data Centre, and the same process is happening for them. So it's, it's really sort of a cutting edge, if you like, in these terms of the sorts of information that we're looking at. Now, uh, the published data on the ESDS based at the uh, UK Data Service in Essex, uh, it seems that they are producing an increase in return on investment of up to 10 to 1. So for whatever pound that, that they, um, they spend in, in holding this data and having this data available, it's bringing back a return, a tenfold return on investment, which uh, by uh, no stretch of the imagination is very, very good. I would like to say that we are in the same league, <laughs> uh, but we're not quite. <laughs> um, uh, the initial sort of uh, outcomes of the stuff that we're looking at is that we're probably a little bit less than that, but we're still providing a really healthy return on what we're doing between uh, two and eight times the value. So, um, so what we have found, the initial sort of findings are that we are important to users in academic, private and commercial research, heritage management teaching and learning, so we've got a really nice spread and really nice reach across the section of the world. 53%, uh, so I'm glad that we've got over half of uh, users said they would, uh, that not being able to access ADS data would have an impact on their work. And um, so perhaps the, the lady who hadn't heard of us, give us a go, you never know, it might make a big difference. Um, and that uh, users realise significant efficiency benefits from using ADS data in terms of the time that they would have to be spending doing other stuff uh, to find the same sort of data. So they do place a considerable value on their ability to access that data, although they might have limited capacity to pay for such services, and that's where the problem lies, is that we may not be able to um, look at the same sort of status, if you like, so people using British Atmospheric data uh, may well be a lot wealthier than the user community using our data, so that does start to skew the figures slightly. Um, so I would <coughs> say do um, do follow the the progress of the, the project. I do think it will have a big impact um, on how we view the data and how we view what we do with it, and how you, if you're there creating websites um, and hosting your data online, may wish to start viewing 
how that affects the rest of the rest of the sector. Um, so I'm sorry that I haven't been able to give you sort of the facts and figures, uh, but needless to say that one of the members of the project did say that uh, if we were a road, uh, if we were a proposed road, we would definitely get built. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> that's the case. <laughs> Thank you very much.